Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster. We're going to be taking on a level 3 White Lion. I'm really excited for this fight. We've never taken one of these on. I've set the board up already. I've got our terrain out there, and I've also set our characters where we're ready to go. Now, of course, this is all kind of an illegal placement, and I will explain what's going on here as soon as we get done explaining what the White Lion has. I've already set up the AI deck and the hit location deck, but of course, this White Lion is different from any we've fought before. So let's quickly go through all the things that he has that we don't actually have. One thing also I want to say is I still haven't had a chance to build out our lightning kit or lantern kit yet, so we're still stuck with this leather kit for her, and I apologize. Again, I've been working on another game, and I really want to get that out, so we're still going to be moving forward. I want to keep playing this game. I'm having so much fun, and I know I want to make a new character, and it will happen. It will happen. It's just not going to happen right now, so we're going to continue on with what this white lion has. Our White Lion, I think, is going to be a little bit tougher than that Beast of Sorrow. He's going to start with 14 toughness, 8 movement. He has a plus 2 speed tokens, plus 2 damage tokens. Down here, it gives plus 2 accuracy tokens and plus 1 luck. Now, of course, it does start with 10 basic, 9 advanced, and 2 legendary. I've already mixed those together in our thing. Now, the interesting thing about this is it does start with Cunning, Merciless, and Indomitable. Now, we've seen Cunning before. We've seen Indomitable before. We haven't seen Merciless. Check this out. Archive Beast Paw, Strange Hand, and Straining Neck from the Monster Hit Location. Always treat all survivors as threat despite any effects that say otherwise, and double all damage inflicted by Grab. Grab, of course, does, I believe, one damage. Let's see here. It says, if the adjacent survivor target one and random full and full move the white line directly away from all threats target suffers grab place the target knocked down in front of the monster and target serves one damage per monster level so not only will this monster be doing three it will be doing six damage to anybody it grabs so we do not want to get grabbed i've gone ahead and take the liberty of grain grabbing straining neck strange hand and beast paw and we are going to archive these I mean they are not going to be in our hit location deck when we go to grab cards, which means that trap could appear even faster. I've given him two damage, two speed, two accuracy, and one luck. Also, this character starts with ground fighting in play. The monster flops onto its side, waiting for attacks, attackers to draw near. While ground fighting is in play, do not draw AI cards. When a survivor spends an action in the zone of death before resolving the action, the monster performs basic action with plus two speed and plus one damage, targeting the survivor. So that means he would be targeting us with a basic action with plus two speed, which would be two speed, four speed, five speed, six speed. He'd be going at us with six speed, which is just ridiculous, and plus one damage. So instead of doing one, he would do two, three, four damage per hit with this, out of control. So here's the zone of death. When the lion is wounded, discard ground fighting. Now the interesting thing about this card coming into play is unless I move into this zone of death, if I'm playing this wrong, I don't see how this, why it wouldn't work any other way. This lion won't actually do anything. It won't do a darn thing. So that is why our board is set up a little bit different. Now, if you're excited to see if we can take down this level three white lion, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. Let's go ahead and start our battle. I have adjusted this a little bit. I moved the grass up a little bit because I forgot at the beginning she has to gain the priority target token. So he's going to attack her no matter what. She's eventually going to jump in and probably attack this lion and he's going to turn around and attack her when it's his turn. So that's why I moved that around a little bit. Also, there's a few things I'm going to do at the beginning of this. Oh, you get this ability right here. You feel invincible on arrival. Gain survival up to your survival limit. The extra weight is great. Leverage all clubs you in your gear grid. Gain sharp. She does have a mace that is going to give her sharp she has a club here which means she's gonna be able to roll a d10 and add that to her strength when actually wounding the white lion which is gonna be awesome he is now the reason it's set up like this is with ground fighting in play 
I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to go ahead and have all these people run around and get all the resources, do everything they can, get all set up, and then we're going to make our first attack. So one thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have this guy scream a few times, which means I'm going to give plus one insanity to anybody who is not deaf or insane, which is going to be her. So she's going to gain three insanity, which is going to be awesome. He also gains three insanity when he arrives thanks to his screaming leg. Was it warmers here on arrival? He gained three insanity. So he has three insanity. She has three insanity. She She's actually deaf because she has her lantern helm. It says, earplugs, you are deaf. So she doesn't get the insanity, that's totally okay. And he's already insane, so that's totally fine. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the rest of these resources. He gets plus two to roll on every one of these. So he's gonna go ahead and start gaining these resources. We're gonna start with our fresh acanthus plants. We're gonna go ahead and roll the first one. We got a lantern 10 and roll the second one. We got a seven plus two is nine. So we're gonna go ahead and check out the two acanthus plants. On a nine plus, I get a fresh acanthus strange resource. So he gained two fresh acanthus strange resources. Here's one and I've got the other one over next to him. We're gonna go ahead and he can hold on to both of those. The next thing we're gonna do is our debris. We're gonna go ahead and roll and see what we get. We got a nine plus two is 11. If we go ahead and look at this, you find, a rare gear gain one sharp sword or scrap sword gear card archive this trade. Oh, that's gonna be really good. All right, so these have all been used, and I'm gonna gain a scrap sword. Here's the scrap sword right here. Weapon melee sword metal. On a perfect hit, the edge sharpens. Gain plus four strength for the rest of this attack. And if I have a two reds and a blue linked, it gains deadly, which is gonna be pretty awesome. So he's gonna go ahead and just hold on to that. He doesn't have room in his gear to, gear to equip it or anything. And we're gonna continue on. We're gonna go ahead and use our ore vein. Now the ore vein's interesting because I do have a pickaxe on him. So he gets to, what's it here? Uh, if you are carrying a pickaxe, roll 2d10 and add to the result. So he's gonna roll 2d10 and see what he gets. He got a seven plus two is nine. Seven, eight, nine says that he gains, find something shiny, gain one iron strange resource. All oh, 13 would have been better. Two iron strange resources have been fantastic. We're gonna go ahead and put this with him. So we've gained all of these. These are all done and we've gone ahead and reaped our rewards from the lion who's just laying there waiting for us. A little interesting how that works. And I believe that's totally legal. So we're gonna go ahead now and actually go ahead and fight him. Now before we do, we are gonna use our cat eye circlet to take a look at the three locations. We have the beast maw, the beast scalp of the deltoid, and the beast femur. We're gonna put them back in that order. No, we're gonna put them in this order right here. That'll be, think, okay, no, really just like that. All right, we're gonna put them like that. Now, that's it. All of our characters are going to pass. We're going to totally start from fresh, and we're going to begin now taking down our white lion. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attack with our arc bow. It's cumbersome, so I do have to spend my speed and my action to attack, and that's from right here. Now he gets plus two to his oh, accuracy for standing on this stoned face. And he has plus two range as well, but that's not going to play into effect here. So instead of a six, he needs a five four, and then he has two accuracy, so three, two. He hits on a two plus. Now he only gets to roll one die, but one's better than nothing. And he got a four, so that does hit. And of course, we are gonna be hitting the beast maw. So hopefully he doesn't fail this. He's gonna roll to see if he wounds the beast maw. He got a three plus nine, is 12, plus he's got two strength, 12, 13, 14, and our beast toughness is 14. So we were able to wound him, so the failure reaction does not go off. We're gonna take a wound and put it into the wound stack, and we're gonna move on to our next character, which is gonna be Breck. Breck is gonna use his Lance of Longinus to see if he can hit. It does have a reach of two, so he's able to attack one, two. He needs a six plus, but he does have plus one accuracy, so he only needs a five plus. Let's see if he's able to hit. He hit once, that's totally fine. Let's see, he has gone ahead and hit the beast femur. So we're gonna see if he can wound the beast femur. We're gonna roll it up, and he got a two plus nine, nine, 10, 11, plus he has plus three strength, 12, 13, 14. He does wound the beast femur. So we're gonna go ahead and discard that. Discard an AI card, and of course the Lance of Longinus now gives the lion a plus one or negative one toughness token, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna place this down where our lion is and he now only needs a 13 in order to wound him. Now the next character we're gonna use, I think is going to be her. She's gonna move up 
and she's going to attack. And she's got her whistling mace, so she gets to roll three dice with three speed. She needs a six plus to hit, but she doesn't have plus one accuracy, so she only needs a five plus. Let's see how she does. She hit once, which is fantastic, and that's the last card we already know about. It's the Beast Scalpula Deltoid. Let's see if she's able to wound this monster. We're going to roll the die, and she got a two plus three is she's got a total of five. Plus, she has plus two strength, so five, six, seven, and this is sharp. So she gets to roll a d10. And she got a six, so the 10, well, she was six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 means she was able to wound our white lion. That's awesome. She's going to go ahead and discard that, grab the top of the eye card, put that down here. Our whistling mace was awesome. She was able to hit. Now comes the interesting part. He is going to surge. He's going to go ahead and go from 10 down to 9. He's going to surge to go ahead and look at the top three AI cards. Or she, he's going to do this now. What I'm basically doing is I need to know when she jumps in his top three cards because she's going to hit with a million attacks and most likely get <laughs> this thing's going to turn around and slaughter her. So we need to figure out who is going to attack next. Maybe I might have him surge and attack first. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have Breck go ahead and surge. He's going to go down to six. I'm not going to use my cat eye circle it yet, but I will be. So we'll be getting to that shortly. He's going to roll his two dice and see if he hits with the Lance of Longinus. He got a five and a four. His lance needs a six plus, but he does have plus one accuracy, so he needs a five plus. So we're gonna go ahead and hit one time. Let's see what it is. It is the beast tricep. So hopefully he doesn't fail this or he's gonna get hit by it. We're gonna go ahead and roll. Let's see what we get. We got a two plus nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. He still wounded this thing, wow. Okay, so he was able to wound that. We're gonna go ahead and take an IEI card off the top, put it in the wound stack. Now, do I want to have her surge and attack? I don't see why not. Or should I wait? Yeah, she's going to surge. She's going to surge, go down to 10, 9. She's going to go down to a 9. She's also going to surge and attack. The reason I'm doing that, she could go ahead and use her round leather shield if she wants to block, but with the priority target token on her, no matter what, he's going to attack her. So there's no reason not to attack this character with her. So she gets to roll three dice, and let's see how she does. She got a lantern 10, a 2, and a 6. So she hit with two of the dice, but she also gets to activate her whistling mace. It says, on a perfect hit, reveal the next AI card, place it on top or bottom of the AI deck. Let's see what it is. It is a basic attack grasp. Closest knockdown survivor in range, closest survivor in range, no target sniff. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this on the bottom. The reason why is it's a basic event, and I'm probably going to wound this thing with her, so I don't want to have that sitting on top. Let's see what our two AI cards are, the Fuzzy Groin and the Beast Temple. We're going to go ahead and attack them in this order. Let's go ahead and see if we're able to wound them. The first one is going to be the Fuzzy Groin. We have hit with five, plus three is eight, plus three. 2, 8, 9, 10, and she gets to roll another die for sharp. 10 plus 10 is 22. Now that 10 does not get to activate a critical hit, but we did hit the fuzzy groin and wounded it, so we're going to go ahead and discard the top AI card. We're going to continue on and see if we can wound the beast temple. Let's see what happens here. We got a 5, so that's not enough. Let's continue on with our sharp. We got another 8, so 8 plus 5 is 12, plus this a, a million, we're good. This thing actually wounded pretty good. My math could be off by one or two numbers, but we still were able to wound it, no problem. Whistling Mace is complete. I'm getting a little worried because that was a lot of hits and a lot of attacks and we haven't seen the trap yet. Now we're gonna surge the cat, I circle it. We're gonna check out the top three cards. It's still not the trap, okay, let's see what we got. You hit the white line, sturdy kneecap, wound, uh, oh, that's fine. I've already got the priority target token. All right, we're going to do them in that order, put them back just like that. Now she's going to pounce. She's going to jump in one, two, three, and pounce. She has her white lion coat that gives, she can use her speed and her activation to move three squares in a straight line. Then, or if you moved three spaces, activate a melee weapon with plus one strength. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to activate our cat fang knife, which has a three speed. Plus she has her white lion gear, of course, which gives her an extra two or plus one speed. So she'll be attacking with four dice. She needs a six plus to wound, but she's in the blind spot. She needs a five plus and she has plus one accuracy. So she needs a four plus. Let's see how we do. We got a total of four hits and one of them is a perfect hit, which means I get a plus one strength token to use. According to our cat fang knife, it says in a perfect hit, gain a plus one strength token. When knocked down, remove them. So she does get this plus one strength token. So her strength is now two, three, four, five because of her white lion gear. And she also gets the monster fang necklace, five, six, 
seven. She has plus seven and she has two more eight, nine. So she's already hitting with plus nine. But of course we have to see what the four cards are. We know what three of them are. We don't know what the fourth one is. Let's see what it is. It is not the trap, the beast head, heel, sorry. We're gonna go ahead and put them in this order. That's gonna be fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and attack them just like that. So we're gonna start with the beast heel first. Let's go ahead and see if we wound it. We roll it up, we got a one, so we failed. A beast heel, that's fine because it doesn't have any type of reactions whatsoever. We're gonna continue on. We have the beast knee. We're gonna go ahead and attack. Seven, we have hit the beast knee. We're gonna go ahead and wound this location, taking an AI card off the top. We're gonna to continue on to the beast flank. The beast flank is a four, plus she has, what did I say? I already forgot the number, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's enough. The beast flank has been wounded. She's going to go ahead and take one off the eye card. And then her last attack against the beast back. And she got another four. So that's also a wound. We're going to go ahead and take that off the top of the card. And that's the end of the cat fang knife. She also is going to be able to now attack with her bone dagger because of her blood paint, which is, I should have activated that, not the cat fang knife, but activate a weapon gear to the left and right of this card. These are two separate attacks and cannot be used with two handed weapons. They are not two separate handed weapons. So we're gonna remove the cat fang knife and now attack with the bone dagger. Now this is still part of our pounce, I believe. So she's gonna be able to go ahead and attack with a seven plus. She does have the accuracy of plus one, so it's a six plus, and she's in the blind spot, so she needs a five plus to see if she's able to hit the white lion. She got a perfect hit, which doesn't help her with this, but it does, well, it's kind of cool to do. So we've hit twice. Let's see if I'm not the trap. Oh, so good. Wound. Snarling, the monster swats at the att attacker. Then we've got, what's this, beast chest failure? Move the monster forward. We're gonna do them in this order just like that. Now, I believe I also get plus one damage with this. Yes, I do have plus one strength with that as well, so I'm gonna place that out there. And I did get plus one accuracy with this, but I didn't even need it because I think I hit with absolutely everything. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can wound with the beast brow. We got a six, which is gonna be probably now six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's definitely enough without even using this stuff on her card. So we're gonna go ahead and take an AI card off the top. And the next one is going to be our beast chest. Let's see if we we're able to wound that location as well. We got a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I don't know about this one. She got a three, then she gets plus two from herself, so that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. She didn't wound the beast chest. Oh no, she totally missed this. Okay, so that's this thing's gonna move forward. Oh, this is gonna be terrible. Full move. The monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivor passed over suffers grab. That's going to be bad. Now before that actually activates, I'm going to go ahead and get her out of here. We're going to place all these back over here. She's done. She's going to actually dash. She's going to take her survival action to go down to eight. And she's going to dash out of the way of this. One, two, three, four, five, I think up to here is where she's going to go. She has a total of five speed. She does get negative two movement because of that big giant lantern gear she has, but she of course has linked the lantern greaves giving her plus two movement, so her movement still remains at a five. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let this thing full move forward. The White Lion's movement value is eight, and at this time, I could actually surge her to attack again if I want to before he actually runs away, but that trap has to be coming up pretty quick, and I want her to actually spring the trap and be attacked because she has all that defense. He's gonna move forward eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and stop when he hits there. And that's gonna be the end of our turn. We've totally done with our characters. I think that was a fantastic first turn. How many wounds did we do? We did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten wounds in one turn. So it's down to 11 plus its basic action. And of course, it's gonna go ahead and move. Its AI card states, what's this? Vicious Claw, random survivor in range. So it's gonna attack a random survivor. Oh, wait a minute, I've got the priority target token. So no matter what this is, she's, he's gonna go ahead, turn around and attack her. So he's gonna move back this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to right there. And he's gonna go ahead and attack Lydia. Let's take a look at our Vicious Claw. It's gonna have two speed, but it does have 
plus two speed tokens, or plus one speed tokens, so it's going to attack four times with an accuracy of two plus. So we're going to be rolling four dice. Now it does get an accuracy of two plus, but it does have plus two accuracy. Now I get some defense since I'm in that tall grass. I get plus two evasion. So that's going to be negated by the plus two accuracy tokens that this white lion has. So it still needs a two plus, but I do have plus one evasion. So it needs a three plus in order to hit me. Let's go ahead and roll him up and see how he does. He hit with all four. All right, I can use one to dodge, but first, let's see where he hits me. Hopefully, no, somewhere where I have at least enough to... Okay, I got two feet. Oh, no, two feet and two body. That's going to be absolutely terrible. Let's go ahead and see how we're going to deal with that. Vicious Claw is going to do three damage. One here, and he has plus two, plus one, two plus one damage attacks. So we've got two to the legs and two to the body. I can dodge one of these. I'm going to go down to nine, and we're going to dodge one of the body shots. That's going to be terrible. But I think this is still going to be bad. We could potentially have a femoral artery on our hands here. So I'm going to dodge this one, meaning that I'm going to take three damage to all of these locations. So we're going to lose three here. So our arm, or sorry, our body is going to go down to one. And our, oh boy, all right, here, this is going to take a total of six. So four, five, six, oh, that's not too bad. We're going to actually just be right here on our hit thing. So we're actually still alive. We don't have to worry about rolling on the evil table of death and femoral arteries. And she is going to be knocked down by taking that damage to her legs. And when she's knocked down, she removes this plus one strength token. And I believe that's all that's going to happen to her. The Vicious Claw also does make me gain a bleeding token. So we're going to go ahead and add that to her. Now, of course, I have to knock her down and she does lose the priority target token which is fantastic so I don't have to worry about that now she's knocked down at this point I'm gonna go ahead and have Hawk go down to eight survival to go ahead and stand her up he's gonna encourage her he's gonna she's gonna stand back up and now she's gonna go ahead and go down to eight survival and she's going to dash she's gonna go one two three four five six and she's able to move six squares because I was able to link her white lion boots for plus one movement which is awesome that means that I don't have to worry about this cunning card which is going to happen now at the end of the monster's turn the monster extends its claws we don't have to worry about it there's nobody adjacent so that means that if there are any adjacent survivors target one at random and full move the white line directly away from the threats target suffers grab ah ha ha lion you are not going to get me and that's going to be the end of his turn so now it's going to be our turn we're going to start with hawk hawk is going to go down to seven survival and he's going to surge that cat eye circle we got to find that trap and hopefully get rid of it what have we found oh there it is it's right here we're going to go ahead and leave that right on top i have a plan the plan is that she is going to let's read the card just to make sure i'm not going to screw this up the attacker has caught the white lion's ruse and savagely mauled the attacker is doomed perform basic action targeting the attacker that's totally fine she has like 10 to everything so she's going to go one two and attack with her whistling mace which means she has a three speed and she needs a six plus now she has plus one accuracy so she only needs a five plus in order to hit the white lion. So let's roll up our dice and see what happens. I got a seven, seven, three. One of them is good enough. It's going to go ahead and trigger the trap, which I'm going to shuffle the AI deck after this is done, but it's going to perform its basic action, meaning it's going to have a plus two speed. So it's attacking with four dice because it's plus two accuracy to or plus two speed tokens. So it gets to roll four dice against her and it only needs a two plus, I believe, to hit. It needs a two plus. I get plus two because I'm in the tall grass, so that's going to negate each other because of her plus two accuracy. Now, Gwyneth does have plus one evasion, and that's it. She has plus one evasion. Now, I could go ahead and surge to use my round shield to add to be able to block, and I think I'm going to do that. We're going to drop her down to seven. She's going to surge to use her shield, meaning she's going to be able to block one of these attacks that comes in. So the white line only needs a two plus to hit. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be pretty bad. It missed with one. I'm going to block one, and then it's going to be able to hit me for two damage. Let's go ahead and see where it hit me. It hit me in that oh, double hit to the hands. So this a lion is going to do six damage to her hands, bringing her armor there down to four. We're then going to do a good old truffle shuffle on our hit location cards here so we can get them all set to go and our characters can hopefully do some damage to this white lion and hopefully take it down. Her actions are complete. We're going to move into somebody else's turn. I think we're going to go ahead. 
oh, I, I want to attack with her, but I'm afraid whenever I attack with her, there's a chance. I, I roll like seven attacks with her, so I'm wondering if I should go with him first. He's almost automatic wounds, but we have a large hit location deck right now. Let's actually start with her. She's going to move in. She can't pounce because I have to move three squares in order to pounce, but that's okay. We're going to activate our blood paint this time. I'm not going to confuse people this time. Activate this weapon gear to the left and right of this card. So the ones that are to the left and right are these two cards right here, our cat fang knife and our bone dagger. So we're going to activate our cat fang knife to go ahead and attack first. It has a three speed, needing a six plus to wound, but I do have the blind spot, so I need a five plus, and I am plus one accuracy, so I need a four plus, and I get to roll four dice, three from the cat fang knife, and one from my white lion gear. Let's see if we're able to hit. We were able to hit three times. I'm gonna go ahead and draw three hit location cards. We have hit the glorious mane, the beast chest, and the beast heel. We're gonna go ahead and put these in this order, just like that. That's how we're gonna wound these locations. Let's see if we're able to do it. The first one is the glorious mane. We got an eight, it hits, but of course this is a super dense, impervious location, so it doesn't actually do any damage, which is too bad. Next, we're gonna hit the beast heal. Let's see how we do on that one. We got a lantern 10, which is a critical wound, but we have one small problem. This character has a plus one luck token, this monster does which means that I have to have a, any have to have luck in order to actually critically wound because I need actually technically an 11 to critically wound it. Now the Lantern 10 is still an auto hit, but it is not a critical hit. So we're gonna go ahead and take a card off the eye deck and put it in the wound stack. We're gonna go to the beast chest. Let's see how that goes. We got another Lantern 10, but again, we don't critically wound it. Oh, that's so sad. That'd have been two critical wounds. We're gonna go ahead and remove another card. That's too bad, Mr. White Lion, your plus one luck token. This one has been resolved. We're gonna go over to our Bone Dagger now and attack. This also has a three speed, but I get to roll four dice because I give it the plus one. And the seven, six, five. Let's go ahead and roll these up and see how we do. I only hit with two, so we're gonna go ahead and take the top two cards. We got the beast back and the beast scalpular deltoid. I don't wanna wound, fail at either one of these or he's gonna go roaring through my entire party. All right, we're gonna go ahead, we'll just do that. They're both the same, so let's see how we do. We're gonna go ahead and wound our first one and see what we get. We got a seven plus a million, so this is a wound. We're gonna go ahead and discard this, take the wound off the top of the deck. We're gonna go to the scalpular deltoid. Let's see how that goes. Oh, we got a Lantern 10 again, but oh, imagine so many criticals I'm missing. Oh, that's so sad. All right, we're gonna discard that one, take another wound off the wound stack. That's the end of her turn. She's gone, she's gone. I'm gonna have him go ahead and attack with that spear. He's got two dice, he's gonna go ahead and roll. He needs a six plus, but he does have plus one accuracy, so he needs a five plus. Let's see how this goes. He hit twice. He's gonna go ahead and take the top two hit location cards, a beast knee and the beast ear. It jumps, oh, I don't wanna fail that one. All right, we're gonna do them in this order just like that and see how we do. The first one he's gonna wound is going to be the beast knee. Oh, I need to roll it in the little dice container. We got a three plus nine is nine, 10, 11, 12 and he has plus three strength, so that's plenty. He was able to hit and wound the beast's knee. We're gonna take a card off the top of the eye deck. And the next one is the beast's ear. And he got a seven, so that is also a wound. He's able to remove that card and the top card from the eye deck. He has gone ahead and attacked with the Lance of Longinus. That's his turn. We have one person left. Hmm, I don't know what to do with him. I could attack with the Arcbow one time, or I could use his action, because I've already surged the Cat-Eye Circle. It doesn't me say I can't do the Cat-Eye Circle twice if I use my two actions. I think I'm just gonna use his action to look at the Cat-Eye Circle and see what happens. We have found oh, no trap, so I'm gonna go I'm roaring after this guy again. We're gonna do the Soft Belly, then we're gonna do the Beast Brow, and then we're gonna use the Beast Tail, or keep him just in that order, just like that. That's awesome. I think we're gonna go ahead and surge with, hmm, this is a tough one. We're gonna go for all the marbles. She's gonna, she's gonna be the one that surges. She's gonna go down to seven and she's gonna surge with her blood paint, meaning she's gonna be able to attack with her cat fang knife. She's got four attacks, needing a six, five, four in order to hit. Let's see how she does. She hit with all four. One, two, three, we know three of them are not the trap, but one could be, no it's not, yes, okay. We're gonna go ahead and keep these, what's this one? Wound, if the attacker has plus three understanding, the sound of cracking ribs is encouraging and plus one survival. I like that one, put that one on top. We're gonna do them in this order just like that. We're gonna start with our beast ribs. So let's see if she's able to wound it. She has how much to her strength? A million, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think is what she gets. No, it's eight. She gets plus eight because this is plus two strength. So she gets plus eight to this roll. Let's see how she does. She got a four 
plus 8, not eight, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's, that's not enough. Oh, no, we didn't wound the beast's ribs. That's too bad, so we're going to have to put that one aside. The beast actually has a 13 toughness. All right, let's see if we can get the next one area here. We got a 2. That also missed, which means that we're not going to be able to wound this one. Wow, her knives are not coming through now. Let's see if she can do it again. Now we need to start wounding because this could be bad. Let's see what she gets. She gets a 7. She was able to wound this one. Let's see what this says. Snarling, the monster swats the attacker before... Oh, what? Attackers have one brain damage, perform a basic action target. Oh, I would have put him in the other order. Okay. Nope, I put him in this order. I'm stupid. I should have looked at him a little bit better. All right. So he's going to turn around and attack her. She's going to suffer one brain damage, bringing her insanity down to two. And now this white lion is going to go ahead and attack her. This could be really bad with her basic action. And I can't use my survival to do anything about this. One thing I can do is since this is sitting like that, uh, during this reaction, before it fires off, I could attack with that spear, and I think I might do that. I'm going to surge Breck. Breck is going to surge to a 5. That's what he's going to do. Surge to a 5, and he is going to go ahead and try to hit with that spear. The spear needs a 6 plus, plus he has 2, uh, or plus 1 accuracy, and he's a 5 plus. Let's see how he does. He hits twice with that spear. Let's see where he hit him. Hit him in the beast tricep and the fleshy gut. So we're going to go for the beast tricep first and see how that goes. Let's we'll see our failure perform basic action. White lion swats back. From, okay, they're both the same. That's pretty funny. All right. He's going to go ahead and see if he wounds the beast tricep. Hold up. He got a one. He didn't. Oh, man, this is terrible. All right. <laughs> okay, this thing's going to be nuts. All right. Let's see if I get all of this right because there's a lot going on here. This could be a mass chaos here. First, I'm going to get rid of the cat fang knife. That's pretty much done. He, if she's still alive, though, she gets to continue on, from what I understand. All right, so I have to perform two basic actions here, pretty much. So the first one I have to perform is this one. These kind of stack on top of each other. So this one is going to go ahead, turn, and attack him. Perform the basic action, target the attacker. She is going to dash out of the way. She's going to use her survival to go down to a six. She's done. She's going to dash out of the way. She's going to go hang out over here somewhere. Um, I'm going to put her one, two, three, right about here. That's fine. She's going to go right there. He's going to move up and attack him in the tall grass. His basic action gets to roll four dice. Let's make sure we get this out of here so I have this all correct. He just does four dice, and he needs a two plus. He's in the grass, so he gets plus two, so he needs a four plus. Then he gets the plus two accuracy token, so he's at a two plus, and he only has one evasion, so he needs a three plus in order to wound. Let's see how this white lion does. The white lion totally got this guy. All right, we're going to roll four dice and see what happens. I can't do anything about this. We're going to go ahead and roll. He got three to the body and one to the hands. This is going to be devastating, taking three damage to the body and three to the hands. So the hand, arms are going to go down to two, which isn't what I'm really worried about here. I think you can see the writing on the wall in this one. So that's six. Five minus six is negative one. So he's at this light injury here. Plus he's got to take three more. So he's going to go ahead and take a one more. He's going to be knocked down. And now he has to roll on the evil vile table of dead survivors. So let's go ahead and roll and see what happens to him. <laughs> I think you know what a one does. I'm going <laughs> to... Do I even have to read it? All right. So technically he... <laughs> Super dead survivor. We're super dead survivor. All right, let's go ahead and check it out, though. And out of nowhere, instant death. The blow sends a bone fragment directly into your heart, killing you instantly. We have lost Breck. Breck is dead. There he goes off the map. And I bet everybody who's watching, I'm just telling you right now, <laughs> survival of the fittest. I don't know if I've ever made this through this. Having the ability to <laughs> get a bunch of characters is awesome because I don't think I've ever gone through an entire round here without being absolutely murdered by something. Now it's time for this guy to run over here. So his cards are complete. I'm going to go ahead and discard these. Now we're moving into this one where I lose the brain damage and I perform a basic action target the attacker. So the next on the stack is this attack. So he's going to turn and go ahead and attack her now and see how it goes. He's going to go ahead and roll four dice and hopefully miss with all of these attacks. Let's see what happens. He got a two, two, and a four. Now she has plus one evasion. She gets the two from the thing. She has plus three. He's going to negate two of that, bring it to one. So he does need a three plus in order to hit. So two of them actually missed. So I'm only going to take two uh, damage to whatever he hits, which isn't going to be good. I got it to the body or the, sorry, the waist and the legs. And being hit in the waist and the legs is absolutely devastating. 
the waist, not so much. I'm gonna go down to one in the waist, but check it out, there we are. We're stuck with the legs again. We'll see what happens on our critical hit or wounding death table for her. We have to roll. We're gonna roll it up and we got a six. Let's go ahead and see what that says. Six is Destroy Genitals, which is super fun. You cannot be nominated for the Intimacy Story event anymore. The injury is permanent and it can be recorded only once. Getting random disorder, you're knocked down. Gazing upwards, and you wonder at the futility of your struggle. Gain three insanity, which is gonna bring her insanity up to five. And I'm going to gain one bleeding token. And so let's go ahead and take care of the rest of this. I'm gonna get knocked down and gain a, what is a disorder. We're gonna knock her down and she's gonna gain a random disorder. Let's see what we get from our disorders of doom here. And we're gonna give them a good old truffle shuffle and grab one, let's see what it is. We have got the monster panic. Whenever you suffer brain damage from an intimidate action, suffer one additional brain damage. Oh, terrible, all right. We're gonna give that to her and we're gonna continue on. Now she's knocked down, so of course none of these would pertain. Plus I don't think that she would have a chance of being able to wound this location because it moved out of range while she was attacking. But that's beyond the point. There's no way this she's gonna be attacking. She's laying on the ground. That is the end of our turn because he was able, he surged and he did an action. She moved, attacked and she surged. So we're gonna go ahead and see what our lion does. Our lion is going to, what's this, bloodthirsty. When this comes into play, draw an AI card. When a survivor suffers damage of any for any reason, place one blood token on bloodthirsty. At the start of each monster turn, if their bloodthirsty has three tokens, remove all tokens, perform a basis action. Terrible. Good news is it's one AI card I don't have to deal with. Draw an AI card. We have found revenge. Last survivor to wound in range. Closest threat in field of view. Oh, this is going to be terrible. The last person that wounded him, I believe, was her. That was the last person, so he's gonna go ahead and attack this character. Oh no, it's gonna move an attack, two accuracy, two damage. The white line isolates the prey, full move the white line away from the all threats. Target suffers grabbed. Oh man, we're gonna lose like two people, this is ridiculous. Where we sit, our white lion has two AI cards and, oh, it's, it's got four. It's got two that in the discard pile too. I was thinking I might be able to surge, dash in and surge to attack this thing before this happened and maybe actually kill it before it's able to kill her, but that's not gonna happen. There's nothing I can do about this. <laughs> he's gonna revenge her. All right, let's see how this goes. This is gonna be absolutely bonkers bad. She, he's gonna get to roll four dice. He needs a two plus. I am in the tall grass and I get my evasion, so he needs a three plus on four dice. Let's see how this goes. He rolls them up and he hit with three of the attacks. So we're gonna go ahead and roll our damage for those. and see where he hit her. He got her in the head, the body, and the waist. Our revenge card is gonna do two plus his two tokens, so that's four damage to our locations. Let's see if it's worth even dealing with these. Okay, four damage to the head I can take. We're gonna go ahead and erase that. We've taken our four damage. Four damage to the body, one, two, three. I'd have to roll an evil table of death. The waist, one, two, three, four. I'd have to roll an evil table of death. We're gonna go ahead and dodge the body shot, bringing this down to a six, but I am gonna have to suffer the wound to the waist. So we're gonna go ahead and take that. I'm gonna be knocked down, but that doesn't matter because I'm already knocked down. And we're gonna have to take a severe injury on the waist. Let's go ahead and see what happens to her. She got a six. It's amazing how honest Kingdom Death keeps me because <laughs> I do make some mistakes. When I took my last severe injury, I rolled on the waist and I should have rolled on the legs. So this is what should have happened when I had my first severe wound. It should have been in a t torn Achilles tendon. The one I just had should have been the destroyed genitals one. So it actually is gonna work out. I'm just gonna keep the severe injury to our waist the way it is, and I'm gonna add the torn Achilles tendon one now, even though this should have happened in reverse order. It does say, your leg cannot bear your weight. Until the end of the showdown, whenever you suffer a light, heavy, or severe injury, you are also knocked down. Skip the next hunt, and I am gonna go ahead and gain a bleeding token. So she's up to three bleeding tokens. And that's really it. Of course, it's not it. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and do grab. It says, when the white line isolates, or the white line isolates its prey, full move the white line away from all threats, target suffers grab. Place target knocked down in front of the monster, target suffers one damage per monster level. So that's gonna be three. Plus, of course, he has his merciless trait, which means he's going to double all damage inflicted by grab. So he's going to do six damage to this character. And of course, it's going to grab her and take her one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down to here. I think this might be the end of her. We'll see how this goes. He's going to go ahead and wound a location. We're going to roll a location die. Hopefully it's, well, there isn't a single location she has that can suffer six damage. It's the legs. So she's suffering a severe injury to the legs. Let's go ahead and roll that up. She's gotten a five. 
Now she has a hamstring injury, a painful rip. The leg is unusable. You can no longer use any fighting arts or abilities. This injury is permanent and can be recorded once. Gain one bleeding token. So she's actually up to four bleeding tokens right now. We're now gonna go ahead and have to deal with cunning. At the end of the monster's turn, the monster extends its claw. And it's gonna go ahead and grab any person adjacent to him. Is it even worth saving her? I don't know. I'm gonna try though. I'm gonna take my seven survival, go down to six with Hawk, and go ahead and stand her up. At this point, she is now going to dash. She's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six to right, nope, I lied. She's gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six to right there. That's gonna be the plan. If I'm lucky, I can actually maybe kill this thing before it kills me. I have a feeling that might not happen, but we'll give it our best shot. We're gonna start with Hawk. Hawk is gonna go ahead, now that we're done with this devastating lion's turn, <laughs> one turn, one turn can totally wreck an entire civilization. It, well, actually, I guess it was part of my turn too, but still, it was pretty rough. We're gonna go ahead and go down to five survival with Hawk, and we're gonna surge the cat eye circlet. That trap has to be near. Let's see where it is. It is, it is right there. All right, I'm gonna put the trap on top. I've got a plan. Let's see how terrible this plan is. <laughs> this can't be the best, but we're gonna give it our shot. We're gonna go ahead and attempt something that could be terribly, terribly bad. Now, our arc bow has a range of six. I don't have any of these links, so I don't get plus two range, but I do get plus two for standing on here. So I have an eight range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which isn't enough to hit, but I can dash, bringing my survival down to four. And if I bring my survival down to four, I can go ahead and dash him to right here. So I've surged and dashed. Now he's got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight range. He can actually attack the white lion. That's going to be my plan, triggering the trap, bringing it up here so we can maybe attack it. So before he uses his movement and his activation to fire off his arc bow, I'm going to activate her. She's going to dash one, two, three, four, five to right here. And she's also going to dash to right here. That's the plan. So we're going to go ahead and put Gwyneth down to five. And we're going to go ahead and move Clydia down to five as well. I'm kind of trying to do this in one shot. This is going to be our plan. Let's see if it works. Shouldn't have dashed him. I should have attacked with him first. Okay. We're not going to move these guys in yet because if he misses, this is all for naught. So we're going to actually not do the dashes. Sorry about that. We're going to just go ahead and attack with our arc bow and see how it goes. We're going to roll up our die and we got a nine. That is a hit. So we're going to go ahead, hit that trap. That trap's going to fire off. He's going to go ahead and perform his basic action. He has an eight movement. So he's going to go ahead and easily be able to get to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right up to here, and attack him totally fine. Before he makes his attack, this is when I'm gonna go ahead and dash with my characters to right here, totally fine. Actually, she's gonna to dash to back here. And she's also gonna dash. One, two, three, four, five. That's the best she can do, but she can dash behind here. Three, four, five, six. Actually, she can get to a pounce range, which is off camera, which is totally fine. We're going to pounce on in. I'll show you where she is in a second. I did forget to put some of these down. When a survivor suffers damage of any reason, place one bloodthirsty token on there. So she got hit with revenge, which is going to put a bloodthirsty card on. Then she got hit with the grab from bloodthirsty, which means she's going to put a second one on. I believe that's how it works. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But he has two bloodthirsty tokens on, and he's about to get a third one because he's going to <laughs> he's going to eat Hawk. So we're going to see how this goes. Of of course, our white lion does get his four dice. We're gonna roll those up. I haven't gotten rid of any of those speed tokens. So we're gonna roll all four of these and see how it goes. He needs like, oh, he hit missed with one. So he does hit with three. Let's see where he hit him. He hit him in two in the body and one in the chest. Two in the body is gonna do six damage here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna just put him right down to his light wound. And in the waist, oh, it's two in the waist, sorry. He's gonna take six damage, so he's gonna take six damage to the waist and three to the body. So he's down to two in the body and well, he's on his light wound to the waist. He does have traumatized, knocked down at the end, whenever he ends his activation next to a monster, he didn't do that. And I think that's about it. Now he does have monster grease on his gear grid. So this monster didn't do three plus, but sadly, it really didn't matter. We got totally attacked. All right, that's the end of the monster's trap. So we're gonna move into the rest of our turn. He did take damage, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one to the bloodthirsty card, meaning that 
next turn, this thing is going to fire off, where he is going to, at the start of each monster turn, if the Bloodthirsty has three tokens, perform, remove them and perform the basic action. So I'm going to get totally demolished by something if I don't actually kill some, this thing this round. Let's see how this goes. He is totally done. He surged the Cat Eye Circle it and used his activation and movement to move there, and he dashed to there, I should say, too. So he's totally done. We're going to go ahead and shuffle up our hit location cards and give them a nice old truffle shuffle, not putting the trap on top, I hope. We're going to give them a shuffle here and see what happens. Then we're going to go ahead and attack with somebody. Huh, who are we going to do first? I wonder if I should just have her jump in and go all out for glory here. I think that's what we're going to do. Or I could attack with our whistling mates from right there with three attacks. Nope, we're jumping. Pounced. Pounce right on in. We're going to see if we can end him. Of course, we are going to be using our blood paint, which means I get to go ahead and attack with our cat fang knife and the bone knife. We're going to attack with the cat fang knife first. I get to roll four dice. We're going to see how this goes. We're going to see if we can actually take this guy down. We're going to need a six. Minus one is five, plus her accuracy is four. So she's a four plus. Let's see how we do. We hit with all four, and I have no idea what these are. This could be devastating. No, it's not. Good. Okay. Well, it could be if I totally... Okay, tense muscle, heal... Oh, three of these aren't even going to affect us. We're going to put this one at the bottom, and I'm just going to go ahead and start from the top and go down. Let's see how this goes. She gets a lot of strength bonuses because she gets the extra one from her white lion coat because she pounced in. So she has one, two, three, four, five from the white lion gear, six, seven from our monster tooth necklace. So she has plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine from herself. She gets a plus nine to this roll. Let's see how she does. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Easily able to hit with this one. We have done one wound. We're going to go ahead and take the top card off the eye deck and put it in there. We're going to go ahead and attack with our second one. We're going to wound. Yes, we wounded. We have wounded the beast femur. The beast femur goes there. We're going to take another card off the eye deck. That's fantastic. It's down to just its three cards that it's actually already done to us. Now it's going to go ahead and see if we can hit the beast heel. Let's roll it up. We got a four. Plus, oh no, what I say was this is plus nine, I think. That's enough to wound the beast's heel. We're going to go ahead and shuffle these up and see how it goes. We're going to shuffle them up and we're going to take this one and put it in the AI stack. Then we have one left. Let's see if we can take out the beast's back. We go, oh no, we got a one. We failed. All right, so it's going to failure. Move forward, monster forward in a straight line, cancel all hits out of range, and survivor pass over suffers grab. He's dashed. He can't get out of the way. This is bad news city. All right, we're going to surge her to see if... Oh, no, she still gets to attack. Oh, I, think I can't. This is during her attack. During the attack, I can actually have people surge. I'm going to surge her to see if she can actually hit this guy with her whistling mace. She's got it right here. She's going to go down to four survival, and she's going to hopefully be able to take this character out. I need to hit with all three of these. She needs a six plus, but she doesn't have plus one accuracy, so she needs a five plus. Let's see how she does. She hit with only two, but the funny thing is I get to look at the top card of the eye deck, see if I like it or not. Oh my gosh, we're going to leave it right there, and we're going to get hopefully kill that thing. Now, of course, I also have to get hit in a random location because I got a one. It says, unwieldy, an attack roll of one, you do suffer one damage to a random body art part. So let's go ahead and see where she suffered one damage. So I got to put it in the tray. We got hands. So she's down to, wow, that's the only part of the body she's gotten hit in. So she's down to three in the hands. Before I roll for damage, I am actually going to put this on the bottom. I've decided to put revenge on the bottom. We're going to see if she can actually wound this thing. She gets plus three, four, five to the roll. So she's going to go ahead and roll and see how she does. She got a five plus seven is 12. Plus she gets sharp which means she gets an extra four, so she did wound. Oh, what did she wound? I don't even know where I hit her. we got to figure this out. We've hit her in the beast maw or the scapular deltoid. We're going to put them in this order. She's hit the maw. So she's gone ahead and wounded the maw. We're going to take one card off the eye deck. Now I kind of wish I would have left the revenge on top. Let's see if she's able to hit the beast scapular deltoid and wound it. She gets a seven, plus she gets sharp. Seven plus five, that's totally enough. She was able to hit this thing. This thing's gone. We're going to take the top card off the eye deck. It's done. That's it. He can't surge. She's already surged. She was attacking. This thing runs. Oh my gosh, this is going to be just terrible. He's going to move forward in a straight line. Any suffer survivors passed over suffers grab. Here we go. Run, kitty, run. Grabbing this guy, going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
over to there. He's going to get laid down in front of him. I can get rid of these. These aren't going to help me anymore. And we're going to go ahead and see what happens. He's going to take six damage to a location. Let's see what location he's going to suffer damage to. He's going to suffer damage to the body. And sadly, that's going to make him roll on the evil table of death because he only has two armor left in that location. So she's up to a heavy wound and he's going to suffer damage. Let's see where he suffers. It's four. Oh, that's probably not going to be very good. He's going to suffer a gaping chest wound. Suffer one permanent, negative one permanent strength, which is plus one. The injury is permanent and can be recorded multiple times. He's also going to go ahead and gain a bleeding token. So Hawk is also in a world of hurt with a bleeding token and he has no armor in his body or his waist. Our survivors are pretty much done. She pounced, so that used her action and her movement. She also dashed and she surged, so she's done. She dashed to here and surged. He dashed to there, surged to look at the cat eye circle it, then he attacked the white lion with his bow using his action and his movement. She actually hasn't performed a move and a normal action yet, if I'm correct. So she's actually going to move a total of, let's see here, four, one, two, three, four, to right here. And because I needed to activate the Lantern Greaves, she is holding these bone darts with a range of six. They are frail. When you attempt to wound a super dense location, this weapon breaks. Archive this card at the end of the turn. It has one speed, needing a seven plus. Now she has plus one accuracy, so she only needs a six plus. Only. Only needs a six plus. Let's see if she's able to hit this white line with these bone darts, which would be pretty awesome. We're going to go ahead and roll up our die and see what happens. We got a three we missed. Well, <laughs> we tried to save him. If she would be able to hit with this and actually wound, that would have been the end because he's at his basic action card. He doesn't have any more AI cards. They're all done. I've wounded him that many times, but sadly she missed. So that's the end of her turn. She's done. Everybody's done. There's absolutely nothing else I can do. So, of course, we're going <laughs> to... That guy's dead. I don't even know I'm going to roll. Hawk, at the start of each monster turn, if the Bloodthirsty has plus three, tokens remove all tokens and perform a basic action. So he's going to go ahead and perform his basic action, and it's going to go ahead and target the survivor, close the survivor in field of view. That's going to be him. So he's going to get hit with four attacks from our white lion. And he does have plus one evasion, but this thing needs like a one plus in order to hit. I don't think this thing can even miss. But a one is, of course, an automatic miss. It didn't. It hit four times. We're going to go ahead and see where these actually wound him. And most likely, this is going to be the end of Hawk. We'll see how it goes. Two in the hands, one in the head, and one in the legs. In some form of miracle, this guy actually survived. Two in the hands means he's taken six damage to the hands, leaving him at a light wound. Then he got hit in the head for three, leaving him at two. And, of course, he got hit for three in the legs, leaving him at two. So he actually didn't have to roll on the evil vile table of death. Now it's our white lion's turn. He's going to go ahead and perform his basic action, closest survivor in field of view. I'm going to do something probably pretty bad, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to do my best to try to save this guy because right now he's targeted. And we know there's not a single location he can probably get hit at and survive this attack. Unless he got hit in the legs and the head and only got hit twice. That would be it. But I don't think that's going to happen. What I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and dash down to three with Gwyneth. She's going to dash one, two, three to right here while he's going to be using his pick target action. Right here I can perform survival actions. The survival actions I'm choosing is dash and I'm going to choose the survival action um, surge. We're going to go ahead and surge. What are we surging? We're going to be surging that whistling mace, meaning I'm going to, be able to make three attacks at a four plus to see if I'm able to hit this white lion. Let's roll them up. I need a four plus in order to hit. And I got one four plus. That's all I need is one hit. Let's see if we're able to do it. We are going to be hitting the beast temple failure, perform basic action, target the attacker. This could be, this is pretty much an all or nothing attack here. And this could be really bad. So she gets to add plus three, four, five to her roll. She got a five plus nine is what? Four, five plus nine is 14. Plus she gets sharp, which adds another. No, oh my gosh, she did really good. She was able to wound him during his pick action tar or moving and attacking the target. So before he moves and attacks the target, I was able to dash in, hit him with the whistling mace and take down the level three white lion, killing him. Oh my gosh, that was absolutely an epic ending to this. So that was amazing.
There you have it. We were able to take down a level three white lion. We took a little bit of damage. We didn't lose more than one survivor, which is awesome. Sadly, the survivor we lost is Breck. Breck had the Lance of Longinus, which is irreplaceable. So if this character dies, I have to archive this piece of gear, but that's okay. We do have another set of those land, uh, antlers at home. So I could go ahead and build another one if I wish to. We are able to gain the Elder Cat Teeth because we defeated a level three white lion. We're gonna put that with, of course, the rest of the stuff we have found on our adventure. We found a sword beetle, a fresh acanthus, one iron, and a monster bone. We're going to place those there. And of course, we got a scrap sword. It's pretty cool. We'll see how we can do with that as well. Now, of course, we do get to reap the rewards. I get four basic resources. So we're going to give these a good old truffle shuffle here and see what four basic resources you get. One, two, three, four right there. Let's see what we got. We got another love juice, a question mark, a bone, and a hide. Awesome. Those are amazing resources. That was so good. Now we also do get eight white lion resources for defeating the white lion. Let's see what eight we get. We're going to mix them up and give them a good old truffle shuffle here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just get, grab the eight off the top. White lion claw, testes, the shimmering mane, cat bone, cat bone, white lion fur, sinew, and the strange hand. When you gain this, a random survivor gains plus one insanity. All right, we're going to give it to a random survivor. Let's see which one gets it. We're going to roll them up here. He gets a nine, she got a seven, and she got an eight. So he's going to go ahead. That's Hawk. Hawk is up to nine insanity, and that's going to be all for him. That is the White Lion Level 3 Showdown. We were able to take him down. I'm pretty impressed with how our group did. I think we did okay. I hope I got everything right. Might have been a few mistakes. I was playing pretty fast because this was a really fun fight. Now, we're going to go ahead and move into the settlement and hunt phase next, and that'll be in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough of Kingdom Death. We have made it really far into this adventure. We're getting so close to the end, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to be capped off, hopefully with a giant victory for Solace. That'd be amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster. Now, if you did enjoy, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol. Also, please feel free to take a look in the description below, because we have a lot of cool things happening at One Stop Co-op Shop. We have a sister channel called One Stop Streamed, where all of us go ahead and play games streamed online, where you can go ahead and check out the entire movement game on your own. Of course, there is a schedule. Go ahead and please check it out. It's really cool. Also, don't forget our Facebook. We have a Discord channel. We've got like everything going on. So please check out all that stuff in the description of this video. Also, don't forget, leave anything else in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. And if you're excited to see what our characters do in the settlement, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.